Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. I have on the workbench a vintage TIAC hi-fi system. It's got a record player, it's got a dual cassette, it's got a CD player, a couple of speakers. I don't think they hook on, so it's actually a, a mini stereo system rather than the boombox. Um, I don't know, maybe 1990s, early 2000s, probably 1990s because it's still got the cassette. Um, the bonus is it's got the turntable, so if it wasn't the record player, if it was only the CD and cassette, I probably wouldn't worry so much about it. Although I can't help myself. I want to see if I can fix these things. It was dropped off to the shop for e-waste and I just thought I'll bring it home. It's not broken. There's no cosmetic damage that I can see. So let's see if it works. Let's see. We'll test it all out. If it is completely going, including the cassette, which is the most likely to be the one that's playing up. But if it is all going... I could probably get at least $50 for it through the shop, uh, particularly because it plays the record. So let's give it a test out. If it's got a fault, we'll see if we can fix it. I do know of one fault. The uh, One of the speakers, one's got the plug, the other one hasn't, the plug's been ripped off. So I'm gonna have to fit a plug to it, but we'll see if it works first. We'll give you a better look before I plug it in. It's, uh, it's a bit dirty, it's been in a shed, but I think that'll clean up okay. The top doesn't appear to be badly scratched. It's, uh, as you can see, it's very dusty under there. It's not the best quality. It's quite a cheap unit, but um, if it works, it will be saleable. It feels like the, the stylus there is okay. Um, and the front of it, we have uh, the tuner at the top. So it's AM, FM. Then we have a little graphic equalizer module and volume and the various functions there. Also have a phone's output, but it's only the smaller plug. A dual cassette, A and B, and down here we have a CD player as well. So it's going to be quite a versatile unit, and it may even be a good one. I was thinking of putting a record player in at our Airbnb and just a few records from the shop, just so some people can, you know, reminisce. Sometimes you love to sit around and play a few old records. We could leave a selection in there just as a little bonus for people that stay in our Airbnb. But if not, if it all works, look, I could probably ask $75. The speakers look okay. Oh, look, we've even got a smiley face. So I'll power it up. I'll plug it in through my portable appliance tester and we'll just run through each of the functions and see what actually works. So I've just powered it up through the appliance tester and I don't think this is new enough to actually have a remote control. I mean, it could do, but I don't didn't get one with it. So there's our power switch. We have our standby light come on or our power light. Uh, let's go to radio first, so I'll turn the volume down, and this switch goes, oh, that's very stiff, CD's at the bottom, whoops, very crackly control, so that's often the case on these things, they get dust in the controls, that's set to tuner, we have a bit of a crackle, oh, all these buttons are really stiff, Okay, that's AM. Certainly needs some spray in those, so we might have to pull it apart a bit. Even though it looks like a component system, it's all one case, so hopefully it's not too bad to get into it. So we have a bit of a hiss. Let's try the tune. Oh, yep, we'll turn that down a bit. So it sounds like the radio is going to work. And they're not picking up anything, although I don't know if the... There's a little antenna wire at the back, but I think it's broken. So the antenna wire is very short. I think it's been resting underneath it when someone slid it around on a bench and it's it's actually damaged the wire. But I'm pretty sure our radio is fine. Uh, what have we got here? We'll turn these down a bit. We've got FM stereo. Let's get FM mono. Sometimes helps to be able to get a channel without the hiss. There we go. So it does work. It's not very loud, but it might be a distant station. Okay, the radio is working okay. We just need to repair the antenna wire. So that's fine. And AM will work as well. I'm pretty sure. Yep. And that will probably have an internal antenna. 
Minister of New Zealand, former head of the UN Development Program, with us today on Big Ideas, and from the Australian National University. Okay, that sounds okay. The volume is pretty good. There's not much crackling with that, which is nice. So, okay, radio is a tick. Let's go to the CD player. Now, where's our door open? Oh, that works, but it's quite dusty in there. Let's adjust the camera a bit so you can see what's going on. So it's quite dusty inside that, but at least the door opened nicely, which is good. And close. And you probably won't be able to see the little display down there. It's just a liquid crystal display. It's registered at 18 tracks, so that's very promising. Uh, play would be here. And it's saying track one. All right, that's good. Sounds like the CD is going to be fine. I'll just go through a few of the functions quickly. Pause, play, stop. So we've got a saleable unit. Radio and CD both work. Okay, let's go to the cassette next. A crossing in Gaza, main point of entry for oh, aid to the enclave. These switches this are very stiff. Edited. Okay, so that's tape. Now, hopefully, these aren't too dirty inside. They've got the old slow opening. No, they don't look too bad. Let's find a cassette. Okay, let's. See if this is going to work. We can close that one for now. We're on tape B. Interesting that B's on that side and A's on that side. That's strange. Okay, play. Excellent. That sounds good. Maybe a little sluggish. And fast forward's not very fast. But it does work. Rewind. That's okay. Back to play. Pause works. Let's try the other side. So probably the pinch roller needs a bit of a clean. It'd be worth cleaning the head as well. Oops, why is that not going in? There we go. I have to rewind now. Hmm, we're not getting any sound from the other side. All right. We've got a real problem there. It's not driving on play. It's not hurting the tape. Yeah. All right, it might need a new belt. Something dodgy is going on there. Let's try this side. Weren't no noise there either. Okay, something's gone wrong with the belt, so I don't think this one's turning at all now. Let's see. No. So there's a belt broken or come off inside. Oh, that's very stiff. All right. So something's wrong with the cassette deck mechanisms. We can have a look if we're going to pull it apart and see if we can sort that out. We still have to check the turntable, so let's have a look at that. Okay, first thing to check there is see if our turntable actually turns. That switch is really tight. I feel like I'm going to break it every time I move it. Okay, let's see if that turns when we move the arm. Whoa, it does. We better turn our volume down a bit. All right, that's pretty good. And I can hear some noise 
from the needle. So our amplifier is working. I reckon the turntable might actually be okay. I'll go and get a record and we'll try that. Okay, we've got a record. It's Mark Holden from 1979, I think. And I've used this record before for testing because I don't really care about a Mark Holden record, I guess. But uh, anyway, it'll be a good test run. So let's see if we get, I don't know what speed we're on. We'll see what it sounds like. Oh, we're on 45. It's going to sound like a chipmunk. Let's go back to 33. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now, remember, we've only got one speaker going as well, and I haven't really fiddled with the graphic equaliser, but I think this is going to be actually quite a good record player. A lot of crackling in all the controls, so there's a lot of dust in it. That's enough of that. We'll take that over there. It doesn't have auto return or anything like that. Purely just a very simple 33-45 speed, manually do everything, but it works. And that sounds as good as Mark Holden probably can sound. So other than the cleanup, the turntable's fine. The CD was fine, the radio is okay, but we do need to clean up these controls and even the graphic equalizer ones. There's dust all through it. We'll pull it apart and we'll see if we can fix the cassette deck. And uh, even if we can't, it's worth cleaning up the other controls because at least it's saleable now. Okay, it's time to see if we can get into the, the inner works of this machine. And you can see that it is just all one a unit even though it looks like a component system it's just what they did i guess they looked better people that were buying these were used to component systems that used to plug together and i like the old component ones you could mix and match different brands and kind of make up your own system anyway this is probably more convenient and probably a lot cheaper to manufacture and it would have been quite a lot cheaper retail rather than buying individual um, components like tape decks and amplifiers well you had to have an amplifier and then you'd have your cd player plug into that and your your turntable plug into that as well whereas this is more of a integrated unit so this back panel looks like a sort of a masonite so it's a timber construction it's only like a, a compound board and masonite and i didn't look up the date of it but i think it would be 1990s or thereabouts. I don't think they made too many units into the 2000s with uh, cassettes. And I'm not sure, I think CDs came out in the early 80s. Now, that can probably stay there. We'll take that one out. Now, there's our FM antenna wire, and it's, it's badly... It's pretty well almost broken right through. It still connects, but we, we'll probably solder a new antenna wire onto that, I think. Okay, will this panel come off now? Looks like it will. Very good. Now, what sort of access do we have? Yep, as expected, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of air in this box. It looks like we have hardly anything under the turntable. It's a very simple design. We have a main tuner board up the top there. That's the radio. Then we have our cassette mechanisms with a little amplifier board, I guess. Or oh, that's probably the amp board there. And our CD player at the bottom. And the power supply, we've got a, it's not a switch mode. It has a uh, decent transformer in here. So everything's pretty easy to get to, I guess. It looks like we can take the sides off very easily as well. I don't know if I need to. I think I can get the... Oh, we need to get to all the switches, don't we? Ah, okay. We might have to... Yes, we might have to completely dismantle it. Our switches are on the back of that uh, radio and control circuit board. We might be able to actually get that one out. Do things unplug? It's always easier if they unplug. Doesn't look like a lot of them do. A lot of the wires are soldered directly into the boards. Oh, they might unplug this end. They're all soldered on. I'm not sure if you can see in there. 
I might have to take the side panel off. Certainly this, maybe this panel. Perhaps we'll leave this one alone because it does have some wires in it. But we'll take this panel off and see if we get a bit of better look at the switches. All right, we can probably just leave that there. Let's take this side panel off. We'll flip this over. Okay, that panel should just lift away and there's nothing attached to that one. So there's no frame as such with this. It's just panel screwed to the corners, well, to the other panels, and uh, that's all we've got. So what's next? We'll get a good look in here at the the cassette mechanisms. Um, the belts look okay that I can see, but I can only see one mechanism. Although this was the side that wasn't turning at all. Actually, the main drive belt looks very loose. It was probably slipping on the motor. Yeah, I think we're going to need to take them out. And the switches, well, we're going to need to remove that board to get into them. So it's going to be a bit of dismantling. Okay, I did a little bit more dismantling. I decided to take the other side panel off because there really wasn't any wires other than a, a little clamp for the mains there to the power switch. And the top turntable un did unplug. There's only one little plug here for that. And because we'd had both panels off and it just clipped in the front, it just was totally removable. So that's handy. So things are looking up. And I've also noticed that whilst most of the wires are soldered directly into the board and then covered in glue, the other end of each lot do unplug. So I'm going to try and unplug these off this board here so I can get the cassette mechanisms out. They've smeared glue over the plugs, so that's a little bit awkward. I might have to sort of pick that off as best I can. But I should be able to unplug the wiring loom from the cassette deck mechanisms and take that whole mechanism out and just see what's going on with the belts. I'm pretty sure it's just the belts. And then I can leave all the wires dangle. It's going to look like a bowl of spaghetti for a while. But uh, if I remove the screws from that board, I can lift it out and we can get to the front part of these switches and we can just make sure that all the controls and the volume pot, which is where I must be mounted separately underneath, perhaps, uh, and get some spray into them all, try and free them all up and uh, stop any crackling. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting there. Um, but So I'm going to try and pick all the glue off these plugs. Hopefully it comes off all right. Not sure why they felt the need to glue them in. But, uh, yeah, it's going to lift off okay. It's probably not. Well, is it hot glue? Or, I don't think it's like a silicon. Oh, there you go. That one just pulled straight out. So I think we're going to be okay there. So I'll remove the plugs and I'll take the mechanism out next. Oh, yeah. The glue's going to come off okay. I don't really know why they did that. I think I better cut this little cable tie. It'll make things easier. All right, so we should have hopefully just four screws to remove that whole double cassette tape mechanism. Oh, they've filled the screw head with glue as well. They must have had the apprentice on the glue gun this day. Oh, they've even put a bit on the uh, that trim pot there. So maybe it's on there to stop people fiddling and I know for warranty claims, sometimes they do put wax on things so that they can see if anyone's been in there to fiddle. Oh, geez, how am I going to get that out? I think we can say this unit's well and truly out of warranty. Okay, will that come out now? Or do we have screws in the middle too? I think we do. How about now? All right, I think it's free. It might be the door. Um, the door catches that are holding it. There we go. Open both doors. And we have our mechanism. Okay, very good. We'll look at that shortly. We'll put this back down. And 
I want to lift this board up next. I think all these wires can just stay there. And again, we've got red glue. I don't think it's wax. I think it's glue in the screws. I have to get a little pick and clean them out. Otherwise, I'm never going to get them out. Okay, I now have all the screws out of that. And that was fiddly. It was more difficult than it should have been. I had to use a little dentist tool to be able to get the screwdriver into the screws. But the board should lift off now. Although, possibly there's... Maybe the volume knob needs... Oh, okay. Maybe it just did pull the volume knob off. All right, now we have uh, the tune out. We better not adjust that because it's aligned to slot in. Why won't that lift over? Oh, we've got some wires here. I have to unplug these ones. We don't want to muck up the tuning string, or I think it's a bit of plastic, but we don't want to um, upset that. Okay, that's got those off. Righto, what's going on? Yeah, the volume knob pulled off, that's fine. And all, look how dusty those switches are. Well, we get a good go at those switches now. So I'll clean them up, I'll get some spray into them. And that should be able to just go straight back down. I'm not going to touch, well actually I need to work the volume back and forward, don't I? Doesn't matter, we can put the knob back on from the outside. The tuning I don't want to muck up because it's perfectly aligned. I don't need to tune the, the tuner so that can stay as it is. And the switches just go th straight through the slots. So that's all good. I think we can work on this section now and clean it up. Get as much of the loose dust off as we can. Looks like the tuning dial thing is nicely greased there. That was all working fine. We don't need to fiddle with that. All right, I have some deoxid here. This one's the F5 fader, which I'll use for the volume control. And I have the uh, the D5, which is more for switches and contacts. Uh, this stuff can actually, uh, apparently can harm the carbon tracks on the uh, potentiometers. So that's why I'm using the other one. And it looks like we should be able to get it straight in. There's a hole just there. So I'll give that a good drink and we'll work it in back and forward. The volume wasn't too bad. It was a little crackly in a couple of spots. So I think that'll be all right. I'll work that in a little bit more before we put it together. Now the switches. I think I can get in here. So same thing on those. We'll give them a good work. It also not only cleans the contact oxidization, but it also has a lubricant in it. So... That should help a lot because they were very stiff. All right, I've cleaned up all the switches from the uh, electronics side of things. But before I um, assemble the board, I've just got a cotton bud with a bit of cleaner. And I'm just going to clean inside these little slots where the controls go. Because it's much easier to do it before they go back through there. We'll give the front a nice clean up as well. And the volume knob I've taken out, we can put that back on at the end. And I think it'll clean up pretty good. I can't see any damage or bad scratching. And even the record player cover doesn't look overly scratched. It's a little bit scuffed, but... All right, I think we can reassemble this board now. So I'm happy that I've got into all those controls, and I think it should fix all the crackling. So our main thing to look at really next is the cassette mechanism. But let's reassemble this board while we still remember where everything goes. And now onto the mechanism. So we might just get some of the dust off the controls first. And I think we're going to need belts for it. Uh, I've got the play pressed down on that one just to see what was happening because this was very squeaky before, but actually seems okay now. So, oh, all the mechanics seem to work fine. However, looking at this belt here, you can see it, 
could actually, it's got a bit of a, a set spot where it's been sitting around the motor pulley for many years and it's actually quite loose. I think that's very loose. So I'm fairly sure that just with the tape, trying to drive the tape, it's just slipping probably on the motor pulley. At least the good news is the belts haven't disintegrated like they sometimes do. I'm going to have to take the little board off here to see what this one's like. And then I'm not sure we might be able to take the whole look the motor assembly off. And uh, oh, we can see the belt through here. Yeah, that doesn't feel as bad, but I think they're just going to be slipping on the motor pulley. But everything else looks to be all right. There was no little pieces of plastic fall out or anything like that. We'll have to give the pinch rolls a bit of a clean, but it's a relatively, relatively clean deck, really, compared to some of the ones I've seen. So whilst the unit was a bit dusty outside, it's actually not bad in here. So I'll take this little board off next. It's got some of this red glue stuff over it as well, but at least it hasn't got into the heads of the screws. Okay, we'll probably just fold that back out of the road. Get a bit of a look at this belt. Yeah, that feels better than the other one. But I think we'll replace them both if we can. They'll both be the same size, I would imagine. Now, can we get this motor assembly off? Actually, I don't know that we even need to take it off. Because that belt will just drop off the bottom of the pulley. Yep, there we go. Now, I did buy an assortment on eBay. Hopefully, I've got one a little bit tighter than that. And we'll get the other one off and see if it's the same size. And it should just drop off the bottom of the pulley as well. It's a double V pulley. And can we get it out here? There is a little mechanism here. How do we get it around that? I'm not sure if that flicks out of the road or not. I don't even know what that does. Maybe we'll have to take that one off. I think we can, it's just one screw. Let's be careful not to lose any springs or washers here. Under that little plastic bit. Okay, I know where that goes. There's our belt. And are they the same size? I would say they would have been. Yep, all right. Hopefully I've got some of those in a little kit here. The only other ones we've got are underneath. They're quite loose as well. Now, do they just flick off from under there? It would make sense to replace them all while we're here, I guess. Yeah, they don't feel very rubbery anymore. So, given that it's a duplicate system, this one would be the same. All right, let's see if we've got some belts. Maybe just a whisker smaller so that they grip a bit better. Okay, success here. I think I've got some new belts that are just slightly smaller than the old ones, assuming the old ones are stretched uh, out of an eBay belt kit. I think it was like only a few dollars. Might have even been free postage. I don't know how they can do that. Look, they're only going to be cheap, but they're going to be better than what was in here. So uh, we just need to put the belts back on and reassemble this. Uh, and I'll give them the uh, make a little bit of a clean just on the pinch rollers and the heads and that sort of stuff while it's out. Just putting this little lever back on now. I've got the belts on. They're uh, fairly firm. I don't think they'd be too tight. I don't know what the issues are if the belts are a bit too tight. I guess they put a bit of extra loading on all the bushes and everything, but they seem quite good. And the, we don't have the flex that we used to with a wobble so we'll get rid of these old belts they can 
go in the bin. So we'll just put this board back on here. And I might spray a little bit of spray in this switch here. This is the record play switch, which can cause problems. Although I doubt anyone's ever recorded on this. We'll put a bit of spray in there before we put it back together. All right, just about done. Now, I always like to assemble the bare minimum to be able to test things, just because quite often you need to do, make a minor adjustment or something's not quite right. Uh, and you don't want to have to pull it all down from scratch again. So I'm glad I've done it this time because I did have an issue. I just put the uh, mechanism back in for the tape players and uh, put a, actually I just pressed play to make sure it was going to activate. And there was a terrible scraping noise and one deck wasn't turning at all. So I've had to pull it out again. I wasn't actually filming. Uh, and there was a little bracket scraping on one of the wheels, which I've adjusted. And one of the belts, it was actually under this one, had gone around a bracket, um, which had kind of, I hadn't noticed that it hadn't sat right down in the pulley. So it was stretching the belt tighter. It was trying to run it over a, a steel bracket, obviously not ideal. And that's why that side wasn't going. But I've got it back together now. Uh, I've just pressed play before and it seems to run without the noise. So let's put a tape in, make sure it's going to work. Uh, she's all a bit wonky because I haven't got, obviously, the sides on it. So let's put this in, it is powered up, and everything's connected that needs to be as far as the tape goes. There we go, the speakers are on the floor. All right, that sounds good. Uh, we can't play too much, of course. What about fast forward? Now this side deck wasn't working at all, I don't think, when we first tested it. I can hear them both working. Oh, pause is still on. Okay, let's check the other one, but that sounds 1,000% better. Well, actually, it's incalculable because we had no noise before, but that sounds pretty good. We'll try this side. It's a bit hard to operate this whilst the frame's just wobbling back and forward. Push that in properly. Why aren't we going in there? Oh, that's better. It wasn't quite dropped in properly. And we'll see if we have noise this side. Whoops. Stay there. I'll use my other hand. And I think the song just finished. There we go. That sounds pretty good. Oh, a little bit wowy. But that could be Johnny Cash and not the tape. Anyway, that all appears to be working beautifully. I'm now confident to put the rest of it together. Although I have noticed these switches are still very, very tight. So I may have to pull that main board out again and put a little bit of grease under them. I don't think it's a switch itself. I think it's the way the controls work on the switch. And they tend to kink sideways a little bit. And it's quite possible that the contact cleaner I sprayed in there washed away some grease. But uh, they're still very stiff. So I might just re-look at that before I put the rest of it together. You don't need to see any of that. We'll get it all back, back together completely. And a bit of a wipe over. We have to clean up the turntable. But we're on the home stretch now. And here we go, all back together. Doesn't that look magnificent? It cleaned up very well. The um, It was only really dusty. I think there'd been evidence of mice in some, of, some parts of it, particularly in the turntable. But it uh, cleaned up very well. I've got a little 45 on there. We'll give it a test through all the functions shortly. But basically, yeah, just a clean up with a general purpose cleaner and a cloth and a little toothbrush. And then some armor oil, which really brings the plastic up nicely. The top's not too bad. It's got a few little scuffs, but the most of it's actually an opaque type finish, which is a damn good idea. Even though you can't actually read the record through it, at least it hides the scratches. All right, let's finish up this video with a quick run through the paces. Uh, we're set down to CD at the moment, so let's play the CD. It sounds much better with both speakers. That'll do for that. And we'll go the next one up on the switch as a tuner. 
increasing over central districts during the Now, that static Melbourne is from the ring light I've got here. If we take the ring light off, of 12. And it's, it's currently 14 degrees. ABC News. It's nice and clear. So the ring light does affect the, the, um, the year, right? let's turn that down. The ring light has a switch mode power supply and it really creates a lot of static on FM. So it's a really good radio actually. And again, both speakers make it sound a lot better. Next step up is the tape, which I'm pleased to say is working beautifully on both one, both sides. I think we have um, Johnny Cash still. When you get the blues, come on. That will do, Johnny. Thank you. So it all works well. Uh, both sides, all the functions work. And uh, and it's nice and clean too. Let's take the cassette now out of there. I've finished with that. And while we're at it, we can take the CD out. We're finished with that as well. Oh, we've got to have the switch on the CD for that to work. All right, next one up is the tape. We've done that. So the last one is the Phono, a record player. And we'll put our little 45 on, which is uh, the reels. And that will do. It's a damn shame I can't play more music, but you know, YouTube like to protect their copyrights which i guess is fair enough so all complete all fixed um all the little jobs are done like the plug for the other speaker of course and the antenna wire are fixed up so she's ready to take to the shop and sell and you know i think i'm going to put 95 dollars on this in the shop it i spent quite a lot of time on it today even cleaning it up probably took an hour by the time i wiped it all down and and um you know, took all the little switches off and cleaned around the knobs and everything. So I don't mind that. It's not a really about the time. It's about saving it. I mean, what a beautiful system we've got here that had been dropped off for e-waste. It wasn't working properly and it was essentially being thrown out. We've brought it back to life. It's going to be pride of place in someone's house. Whether I put it in our Airbnb, perhaps not, but I'm going to enjoy running it at the shop and playing a few records and that until someone purchases it. So sounds pretty good. I'm very happy with this job. It's gone on for a while. I hope you've enjoyed the journey and uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.